Great to have you here once again on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. On uh, Today in History, we're going back to the year 2012, the 18th of May, and we're talking about one of the biggest uh, uh, sites in, in the world, Facebook. On this day, it posted the um, largest or one of the largest tech IPOs in U.S. history of $16 billion. Um, it initially, and um, I'll just go back, you know, to February 1st, 2012. Uh, that was when the uh, Facebook had filed for the initial public offering. Um, the preliminary uh, prospect, you know, stated that the company sought to raise $5 billion from that IPO. At that time, it had 845 million active monthly users and the website featured 2.7 billion daily likes and comments. Um, at that time, also, um, Mark Zuckerberg was, you know, said to, you know, own or retain 22% ownership share in Facebook and would own 57% of the voting shares. Fast forward to May 16th, that was when the IP was eventually launched and it raised um, $16 billion by the 18th of May on this day, making it the largest in U.S. history just ahead of AT&T, wireless, and only behind General Motors and Visa. And, um, you know, that was the record that was broken on this day. Uh, at that time, the company, of course, um, anticipated its IPO on, um, well, anticipated that the IPO would sell for about, or shares, rather, would sell for about $38.23. But it did uh, pretty well. And some people had also stated that that was a little disappointing, um, uh, $38.00. But basically, um, that's what, you know, it is uh, for the 18th of May on this day. $16 billion raised in its initial public offering for Facebook um, on this day in 2012. Wow. Amazing. Well, Facebook has paid its dues, from, you know, going back to how Mark Zuckerberg founded this, you know, just in school. has has grown to a multi-billion dollar company and... Uh, it just helps people connect. Absolutely. And he, you know, has it turned out and been, you know, one of the richest people in the world since, you know, that time, since 2000, early 2000s, um, and still running. So mm -hmm. it's a success story. It's um, also a story that, you know, we should, you know, I always like to say that we should learn from, um, you know, information technology um, and how much we should invest and we should encourage information technology and um, some of that here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, we, we should, you know, open up that space wholeheartedly. Um, yes, I admit that there is, you know, been some success. There are some things that we should celebrate with regards, um, you know, certain companies here in Nigeria, founded here in Nigeria, that have, um, um, you know, made, you know, great stride with regards to information technology. But it should continue to be um, encouraged and to be invested in um, um, moving forward. Mm. So um, I'm going to tell you about a woman who made the Guinness Book of World Records in 1953, 18th of May, this day in history. So her name is Jacqueline Cochrane, and on this day in history, um, she broke a record, which is the sound barrier. So Jacqueline was an American pilot. She was a business executive. She pioneered women's aviation as one of the most prominent racing pilots of her generation. Now, this woman set numerous records and was the first woman to break the sound barrier on this day in 1956. She was also the first woman to take off from an aircraft carrier. She was the first pilot to make a blind instrument landing. She was the first woman inducted into the Aviation Hall of Fame. Jacqueline died, unfortunately, in 1980 when she was 78 years old. And we know that during World War II, she helped deliver American Buttes planes to Britain, helped play an instrumental role in recruit, recruiting qualified women pilots into the Air Transport Command. She was the first woman to build a bomber, uh, to fly a bomber across the Atlantic. She won five Hammond trophies. I mean, she just is phenomenal. She's just done a lot. And she, she began flying, you know, from a very, very young age. And I can, you can see pictures of her looking so beautiful, Proving just like Asisa Adoshuala, like we discussed yesterday, that women really can do anything. So why it's really, uh, or really, why is it phenomenal for uh, Jacqueline Cochrane to make history on May 18, 1953, as the first woman to break the sound barrier? So back in the year, uh, during the World War II, pilots reported that when they flew their helicopters, flew their planes, they get, they get to a point where 
their planes begin to tear apart, to get to a point where basically their instruments begin to freeze. And they assumed, this was called the sound barrier, and they assumed that the sound barrier was actually a physical barrier, that when you fly so fast you get to that barrier, your plane begins to actually tear your instruments begin to freeze, like things just begin to go wrong with your aircraft. So that basically was the, was the belief at that time. But they didn't know actually because you know tech knowledge and all of that advancement had not been at that time. They didn't know that the sound barrier wasn't actually a physical barrier. It was just a barrier that meant that they were approaching the speed of light, right? The sound. The sound of light. So um, Jacqueline Cochrane on this day in history, you know, she actually uh, broke that sound barrier. She flew faster than the speed of light and has now etched her name in gold, in stone, in history as the first woman ever to do so. Fantastic. And, you know, it's uh, once again, the... Um Benefits of living in a society that doesn't limit women in any way, mm -hmm. that doesn't have cultural or political or religious you know, barriers uh, for women. So she is able to break that barrier because there was no barrier limiting... Um, Word. <laughs> there was no barrier limiting you know, how far she could go or you know, how much success she was, she was uh, going to be able to achieve. True. Um, you know, I would like to say that we should once again encourage stuff like that here in Nigeria, you know, and remove some of the things that have limited women. There's so many fantastic, brilliant, um, um, phenomenal female minds here in Nigeria that should be given a chance to just live and, and enjoy thrive. themselves. You yes. know, yes, and, and some of the things that, you know, we've created as barriers here in Nigeria, marriage, religion, tribe, some of all Especially of that. Especially marriage. Yeah. Especially marriage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. Some of all those things should be taken away, you know, um, as barriers for women here in Nigeria so that they can break some of all these boundaries. Yes. Asisa Toshola, um, yes. you know, is our latest example of someone who has first African to win Champions League. Um, yes. um, and there should be more. Yes. Um, there should also be doors open be for more. many, many more um, yes. to continue to And men, normalize approaching successful women. We don't bite. <laughs> No, That's it today in history, May 18th, 1953. A phenomenal woman who broke the sound barrier. And you went back to 2012? 2012, yes, when Facebook um, IPO hit $16 billion on this day, 18th mm. of May 2012. Stay with us. Our first major conversation for today, we're going to Kaduna State, where the Nigerian Labour Congress basically shut down the state yesterday in uh, protesting and, of course, declaring a five-day warning strike uh, to, uh, with the uh, Kaduna state government. So we're going to be speaking this morning with members of the NLC in Kaduna, the president and vice president. And, of course, um, that comes up right after the short break.